Hey, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Rosenberg. This is Real Late on Hot 97. And finally, after much conversation between us over the last year or so, um, one of the, the hot up-and-comers in the game is in the building, my man Logic. Yeah, yeah, what's up, man? What up, man? What's up? A Marylander. I know, it's A crazy. fellow Marylander. <laughs> yeah, it's tight. Like, there's not many, like... Yeah, no, definitely not. I think the only other, like, really, like, that we know of is Wale, but that's, like, kind of more D.C. Rep. Right, right. People think of him as D.C., even though he's really P.G. County yeah. originally. But, um, the, but of course, we're talking about the DMV, the area we're both from. But um, Logic is signed to Def Jam. Indeed. Yeah, Visionary all day as well. You were Visionary's your company. Yeah, well, uh, uh, my manager, Chris Rue, he's the president of Visionary Music Group. And and you were a double XL freshman last year? Yeah, I was. That was crazy. And that, yeah, that was pretty crazy. We just we just found out about who the last uh, who the newest double XL freshmen are. Mm-hmm. Um, but for people who may not be familiar, you have a really big movement. You've been doing sold out shows across the country. What, yeah. what size venues are you generally hitting? I mean, anywhere from like, you know, the Fillmore back in Maryland, which is like 2000. Everybody goes there, um, you know, all the bigger names to you know New York we did Urban Plaza it's funny because we were supposed to get up like in LA we're doing a wheel turn which is like 2300 and we're mirroring the tour that we did last year which was very similar it was a House of Blues run so now we're stepping up about a thousand and we know we could do like 30 to 3500 but we want to wait for the album since that's coming very soon right 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 and, and, and make sure it's just rammed yeah, man. how did you how did you start building your movement because by the time you were named a double XL freshman I think you and I had already been in contact. Yeah, we'd already been in contact. You'd already been, I'd already heard from multiple people who were like, have you checked for this guy? And I looked up your videos and they were, you had views of the millions already. You had a high production quality to the music and the videos. So how did you build things on your own? I always like trying to ask artists to give a little bit of their blueprint because it could maybe help out other artists who try to do it. It's funny, man, because the views and everything were so high, people thought it was fake and shit. Like at first. I believe it. And then, you know, I go on tour and then they're like, oh. They can't say anything because it's legitimate. Um, but I think that really just comes down to, like, visionary. So, you know, what my manager Chris does as far as marketing over there is just insane. Like, we build, like, real fans, not just listeners. You know, there's a lot of people out there that could sell, you know, a million singles. But, like, what is your actual album? So doing, how did you, know? you do it, though? How did you start tapping into fans at the beginning? So, um, like, so they, what made them gravitate towards the video besides it being a good song? Yeah, so I think good, uh, you know, aside from just good music, it comes down to honesty and interaction. And and letting them know that like I mean not to sound cliche but like I'm not better than they are like we're the same you know what I mean like I come from you know our area like it's insane it's like one of those places where you know it can be beautiful by day and then at night you you know drive down the street you know you're driving past multi-million dollar homes you take a left and then you're in a like a badass area so you know for me to be able to relate you know, these people to relate to that uh, especially coming up on, you know, HLC and Section 8 housing and food stamps and all this. And it's funny because looking at me like you're like, oh, you know, who's this white boy? Who's this? this? Not knowing my backstory. So what is your exact racial makeup, by the way? I am black and white. My dad's black. My mom's white. And you just happen to be the biracial kid who's looks went more white yeah, yeah rather than opposed to like a drake or a j cole right it often like, goes the other way around yeah. where like the recessive genes are the white ones and etc it's crazy because my whole family is black like they all look black i'm the only one who looks white besides my mother obviously but you you by far look the whitest of oh, i got blue family. eyes it's insane <laughs> and what let me see and what's your hair your hair is like oh, well my hair's a little crazy dad. that's why, I'm, why you I'm have white hat. boyish hair i got well no i got i got a, a little of the there's a curl to it the curl i got the jerry curl you know they're, they're coming home to america it's like <laughs> no, i'm just kidding but do you do do a lot of people do you feel like because it's not only a racial confusion about you in that you appear you can appear white mm-hmm. but you're really your experience is that of being biracial but also because of your style mm-hmm. I don't think people would assume that your background has has some roughness to it and that you've gone through some things. Well, yeah, and I, you know what I think it is? I think it's mostly, well, I mean, because I'm a, like a very raw spitter. So anybody who listens to that knows that. Um, when I first came out, you know, I was looking at a lot of people around me in their videos and how they were doing things when I was younger, you know, years back and like, you know, doing certain videos like that. But since then I've grown and, you know, found myself, especially for this album. And I think the difference as opposed to the mixtapes to, to the album is I'm not scared to let you know, you know, that my mother and father were on drugs or, you know, my, my brothers were out in the street taking care of people and you know selling crack to them 
and our own father. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm like letting you know how real and how honest it was because I'm a very positive person. So I really kind of wanted to stray away from that and just make it fun, make it about the music until as I got older, you know, and, and these fans are telling me what my story meant to them. Like my mother was stabbed and like all these crazy things. And I'm just slowly giving them a little piece of the story and realizing that what I need to do on this album is not really tell you, but show you take you back to what it was like you know what I mean like I have a song where I'm in my bed at 15 years old um, discussing like I said from from welfare to being on food stamps all these crazy things to the eviction notice on my door and how I'm dealing with all this in my adolescence growing into a young man so yeah. um yeah I think it I think your story is definitely um, is definitely surprising will take a little, lot of people by surprise how, yeah. how did you manage to be so grounded and I'm not saying that to be generic mm -hmm. I say that as to say um, one of the things that people have said about you, um, you know, when you're not around, to me privately, is sort of like, he's almost too polite, too <laughs> grounded, yeah. waiting for the other shoe to drop. Mm -hmm. Like, you are a very friendly person who's from a relatively tough circumstance. Uh, wh what made you that way? Uh, I think, I, like, I truly believe that you're a product of your environment, you know what I'm saying? So we had it really bad, and, you know, my sisters got pregnant, and my, my brothers were selling drugs, and these are and doing drugs, and these are the things that they saw, and they went that route, you know? I actually have a song on the album where I took, because I've talked about my dog's, uh, my, my dad's drug abuse for many years now, and I really delve into it on the album, and one of the things that I, you know, he called me and was like, you know, I really wish you would stop talking about that, and I was like, well... I wish you had been a father and been there, and I would wish that you would understand that by me writing this is 10 times better than me using those same and drugs drugs and inflicting them upon myself to get over it. So maybe you should like not be so selfish and realize it. Right, and be happy that my way of dealing with it's positive. Exactly. So, but what I what I'm saying as far as you know being a product of your environment is where they may have chosen a, a you know a. a or the wrong path per se, you know, I, I saw it and it made me kind of go in the right direction. I guess it's just up to God, not to sound like cliche again, but that's what that is. But and it's also up to you. I mean, you, yeah. you were a kid who made that decision. You're like, oh, I'm yeah. not going to do that. But I just believe in honor and valor, man. Like, we live in, you know, this demographic, like, not, I'm not talking about the purists. I'm not talking about people like yourself, but, like, a lot of hip-hop is, like, really, it just, it's, like, real terrible, like, the, the consumer. Because all they care about is, like, it's, like, it's almost, I'd be more, you know, legitimately ex acceptable if I was, you know, 6'2", black with dreads and toted guns. And then people would be like, oh, he's a real rapper, as opposed to, like, carrying myself with grace and speaking how I speak speak and not trying to throw the accent on everything and like you know I'm just me man and I think if anything that's going to be more authentic in the long run um, rather than trying to pretend to be someone I'm not I've gone through those same experiences you know I was taught and cooked crack in my kitchen at from 12 to you know like in my teenage years to learn and see what these things were about and understand because they were going on in my household but I don't glorify it I'm not like yeah we cook and crack we got this I'm like damn why was I 12 years old and my my sister's baby daddy was showing me how to cook crack like where were my parents you know what I mean and, and explaining that side of but, but I guess that's my question how does someone end up with the perspective that you have on it as opposed to for example what you know so much of the Chicago scene is right now where um, you could say that it's people glorifying I don't want you to speak on that but I will but like where it seems like people are glorifying drugs and whatnot and crime as opposed to looking at it analytically that's what I'm saying were you just an, being trying to be as realistic with yourself as you can yeah. were you kind of just oddly mature for a little kid or do you always sort of have an was. eye on it I think that's definitely what it was like I was never really swayed when I was younger when I was in like middle school I was swayed by everybody I was trying to be like in with all the you know what everybody else was doing like really cool with them and I'm just talking in general and then in high school as I got older I realized like forget everybody I'm just gonna be me I don't need to fit in you know what I mean and and like what I mean by that is uh, it's it's so hard to explain. It's almost like, and I was saying this the other day, how people could be like, Two Chains isn't real. Two Chains isn't real music. You know, you got to be listening to, I don't know, Kendrick or something like that. That's real music. But at the end of the day, it's like if you go to the A and you see where he came from, that is real. That's all they know is that. And, you know, when, you, when they're looking up to it, so it's not that that's not real music. It's just... That's not real to you because that's not what you're about. So when I came up, I came up on Tribe and Nas and Big L and, you know, all the East Coast stuff. So to me, like, I looked at that and kind of wanted to be about that, especially with the Tribe. There's a lot of positivity there. And that's what I took from it as opposed to— Who, but, who got you—who influenced you? Because you're young. Who influenced um, you? Well, I, I was a big nerd. I used to, like, I was really into anime and stuff. And I watched the movie Kill Bill. And I, I've obviously heard of Wu-Tang Clan, but I never— um, like really delved into it when I was like 14 and I watched Kill Bill the soundtrack was done by the RZA mm -hmm. I was like who and then I found him 
found Nas, found Tribe, found everything. And that's where it all went. It started from the Wu. Woods, yeah. How do you identify? Like, mm. do, do you identify as a black man when you look that's when insane. you look racially like I do? Yeah, very good question. Um, it's funny because I do, but I also am accepting of like how I look, and it's it's it can be very very confusing, you know, because I like it was a very messed up household where I came from because my mother is very like prejudiced and racist in, in many ways which is insane because people are like how could she be racist but she loves black men like it's insane uh, and do your siblings appear more black than you do oh everyone yeah all of your brothers appear yeah. to be more of a, uh, a black on the surface than oh, you no, do. Oh, no, totally, yeah, black and white. Like, I mean, they, they look more black than, than, than white. Than white. You just happen to be the yeah. one. So, and your mom actually was somewhat prejudiced. Yeah, which is, it's it's just, and, but it wasn't necessarily just to, towards, you know, black people or anything, but it was just all people. So I'm, like, living in this, and she was also, like, a super Bible thumper, so it, like, didn't make sense. Like, it was insane. It was, like, a really messed up situation. What's your relationship with your mom now? Well, I mean, I haven't spoken to my mom in about five years, but that's only because of, she's very, she's extremely close minded growing up like when I would see rap as like a, a, a way to vent and, and, and you know uh, get out what I was going through she'd be like no cursing and no this and no that but it's like then she'd be on the phone like you mother like to whoever she's talking to so it was very like it was just insane it was a, it was a very negative and terrible so you talk to your dad yeah I talked to my dad um, you know, but how long have you been on your own uh, since I was 17 because because I, I left my mother's um, at 17 I moved in with my father um, and I got two jobs. So he was on uh, social, social services and uh, HOC and food stamps and all that stuff as well. And I went there and I was uh, I was holding down a job and he was like, you got to start paying rent. I was only 17. And don't get me wrong, if I was 17 and we were hurting and I needed to help the, the family, my father, I would have done it. But I'm like, yo, you're getting a lot of money from the government and you want me to pay rent and I'm a minor? That doesn't make sense. So he was like, my, my, how's my rules? I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to go get another job and get my own place. So that's what I did. And that's when I really out. started making music, yeah. Well, what about your siblings? What's your relationship like with your siblings? Um, it's better. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely insane because a lot of my brothers and sisters were How many on, do you have? Well, on my, my dad's side, I have two older brothers. So those are, those are the brothers that I talk about on the album a lot. Um, and they're like in their 30s. And then I have two sisters as well. I'm the baby of everybody. And then on my mother's side, I have two sisters and a brother. And... Oh, and all three of and all four of you guys are from your mom and your dad. No, no, no. So my uh, how many are from your mom and your dad? Just me. Just you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the only one. But your mom's kids were with a different black dude. Different. Well, yeah. There's. It's a. You there, know. So, but she was she always with black dudes. Oh yeah. So all your siblings are biracial, but by different people. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So she's a white woman, yeah. but she had kids with different dudes who happened to all be black. Yes. Okay. Just trying to get the whole family picture because there's gotcha. a lot going on. Yeah, I know it's insane. So, so, and so you you strike out on your own, and what what do you get as what do you do as a job? Um, man, I've had a million jobs from you know working at Jiffy Lube to the flower shop to you know cooking wings at Wingstop to uh, working at the grocery store to like it's just you know went on and on like it's to the point like I'm gonna uh, fortunately like when I'm like 70 years old be able to tell my grandkids like I walked two miles have that through story. the snow <laughs> to get yeah which is insane but while I was doing it all. Um, I just hated it, you know, but I did what I needed to do to get by and then but when I just couldn't take it anymore I remember I quit my job. I was working at Joe's Crab Shack shout out to get yeah it DMV yeah, and um, So I was working there and I had a my homie big Lenny at the time And I remember like sitting down with him and being like yo like I need a place to stay because I was homeless as well um, Through certain periods like my sister kicked me out before Christmas and it was like snowing and I had nowhere to go And I didn't do anything wrong. It was just it's a long story some uh, family drama, but it's all good Anyway, and I remember talking to Lenny. I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm homeless. I don't have anywhere to go and he w I was like, can I like stay with you, please? And he was like, yeah, and long story short, he, I was like, man, give me a year. Like, please give me a year. And I, I didn't have to work. He like took care of me, put clothes on my back, food in my stomach. And when that year was up, I promised him. I had signed a Def Jam and I told him to quit his job of 12 years where he was a land surveyor working out in the snow and the rain and all that. And now he works for me. Which is, is he insane. with you today? Uh, he's, not, he's not with me today. He's actually in Maryland visiting you know, his family. But now we, we all live out in L.A. You don't drink or do drugs? I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um, I used to a little bit. I used to be a big pothead riding around listening to 3 Six Mafia and being stupid, <laughs> you know, but but nah, I, I don't. Um, unfortunately, cigarettes is my only vice. You smoke uh, cigarettes? I do smoke Currently? cigarettes. Currently, how yeah. how much are you smoking? Um, it's not the same. It's just like a regular habit, you know. What I, are you? What do you? What kind of cigarettes you smoking? I smoke Newports. Woo hoo hoo hoo! Yeah. Damn, you are half black. <laughs> Talk about it. Yeah, uh, man. Newport, not one hundreds. No, not the Cadillacs. No. All right, you got a regular sedan. Yeah, yeah, I got the sedan. Damn, Newport. <laughs> are you just trying to confuse people? No, man. <laughs> That's funny. Yo, um, 
So you, how long do you go to University of Maryland for? Well, I never went to. I didn't just hung out there. Unfortunately, I didn't graduate high school. So, um, but yeah, I, I just met some homies that were up there, and I went to like Charles Hall, and that's where they would cook up their beats. And uh, my homie Six, who's my main producer, he's all over the album. Um, and I would go there, and you know, we that's where we first met a couple years back. It's kind of crazy when when I really think about how long it's been. Well, how old are you now? But how I'm 24. You're 24. But when did it start then? It's been as well, because it started when I was about 14, 15. When I and first when got did, into the and when at Maryland? When was he at Maryland? And you guys were up there working. I was at Maryland when I was 20. I was 20 years old. So like so four 2010. years ago. Yeah, like 2010. That's when we really got into it. That's also when I met Chris. And the crazy thing is, like with Chris, my manager and the president of Visionary Music Group, is when me and him first met. That was insane because I wasn't sure because he's young. He's 24. So back then he, we were the same age and he's like, let me sign you. And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like you got to have money and I got to blow up in the DMV first and like all this. And he was like, look, man, he's like, if you shoot for the world, the DMV is included. He's like, don't worry about that. But five, five months after we put out our first project together, Young Sinatra, I was signed to Def Jam. That's so crazy. Well, and the funny thing is a lot of people don't know this, and now that the album's coming out, I'm finna just tell y'all, like, I was signed to Def Jam in 2012. Nobody knows that. Like, exclusive. Like, nobody knows that. So that's why when a lot of fans would be like, oh, your music's changing since you signed to Def Jam, it's like... I was already signed to Yeah, Def it's like your favorite mixtape, Undeniable, was put out under Def Jam. I was already there, right? Yeah, and I already had creative control. But the reason that we didn't say anything at the time, um, and by no means were we lying, we were just keeping the information back, is because we didn't want anybody to think that, like, oh, Def Jam's, like, early, like, that... Well, know, and there was no point. You weren't ready to put out music through Def Jam. Exactly. So you might as well just keep doing what you're doing and allow yep. the business to be what it is. Yeah, man, which is insane. Well, but... are you getting are you getting accepted, do you feel, um, by your peers? Um, I, I, uh, I, I, feel, I feel a little bit that... For how big your fan buzz yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. your name doesn't necessarily get mentioned a lot. We haven't seen a lot of the big collaborations yeah. or anything like that. Do you feel that you're getting your your fair uh your your fair share of props definitely, from those? I'm in the definitely game? I'm definitely not I, I am behind closed doors. Everybody knows logic is a spitter. I can rap better than, you know, damn near half of the people. Like it just is what it is. And that's not me being arrogant by any means. It's just fact. Like I can rap my ass off i've been you know studying and training to do this forever you know and um but i think behind closed doors a lot of people know they definitely like but know why behind up. closed doors why aren't people why do um, people I don't a little know more if it's the image i don't know if they're scared because I, like is he like you look white you kind of soft you seem yeah, soft you seem like a nice guy definitely not soft i got the you hammer s- at the crib so no no you <laughs> seem <laughs> <just> soft <laughs> no i'm joking but you do seem like a friendly guy no, that, and that's the thing that i hate about hip-hop like I'll go on Twitter and, pe- and, and tweet like peace, love, and positivity, and I'll get some like jackass like war, hate, and negativity. I'll go out and say, "Damn, God is good." People be like, "God is fake." You know what I mean? <laughs> They'll be like, "Kill yourself." Like, you know, I hope somebody slit your throat and put salt in the wounds. Like, it's it comes to the point where like I have a positive message, and I'm just a, like a happy dude, you know, even though I've come from a negative place because there is so much negativity, and it, where it's corny to be positive. It's corny to be nice, to be a good person. And it's not like, by the way, I mean, here's the thing, you know, in your defense, because I, I I know, listen, I, I get it. I have my moments. We do all, if someone's over the top positive, it can be annoying. Yeah, For example, yesterday I ended up on Russell Wilson's Instagram. <laughs> there are moments when I'm like, my man, if you post another hot children's hospital picture, <laughs> yeah. or a, like, like I need to see that you're a human being with vices. And, oh, of course. And I guess in his case, it doesn't even matter because he's a football player. Who cares what his image is? But you, as an artist, yeah. you know, it is more important for people to be able I- to identify with you to a certain degree. But it's not like you're preaching religion. No, no, and you're I just think, a good dude. Yeah, but also like with with these interviews, like you see who I am. You see the like you know bullshit. Excuse me that I've gone through, and even on my dated, it's just like people don't. Like my fans, the ones that matter, take the time to go see my video blogs that I put out every week and all these things and see the drama and all the, you know, BS behind the scenes that happens and see, you know what I'm saying, anger and frustration and all these different things. But, you know, the general public doesn't feel like actually taking the time to sit down and go through someone's catalog and like find out who they are. But yeah, I agree where I don't think I've gotten my just deserve uh, in the public eye, but definitely through this album and what's about to happen, it will it will be there. It's just undeniable. Okay, here's a question. How about you on the first record I ever heard from you? Uh, one thing I thought you did that was a questionable move, and I'm sure you've heard it before, was shouting out Mac Miller when you didn't know Mac Miller. Oh, no, so what happened was what I wanted to do, so I thought Mac was dope, 
I'm the type of person where if I think you're dope, it just is what it is. I'm not afraid. We live in a, in, in, in like hip hop where people are scared, like, oh no, like this or that. Like, like Drake takes Migos flow and then J. Cole does it on the TKO remix. Everybody's like, oh, you're jocking Drake, you're jocking Drake, even though Drake took it from Migos. So what's the big deal? Like, I show love. I'm about love. It just is what it is. You know, if I have a problem with you, I'll tell you like a man. And if I, you know, if I mess with you, I'll tell you as well. I remember um, Complex interviewed Mac and they were like, did you know that about Logic? And he was like, oh no, I didn't even know that. He's like, shout out to Logic. That's what's up. I appreciate the love. So that just goes to show, like. But did people yeah. hit you and think, like, wait, are you? Did people think you were down with Mac Miller? Because oh, no, the no, way no, you said it, all. you said it on an ad lib, no, no, and I, it could have been yeah, confused. Yeah, yeah, no, no. What I did was, is I was shouting out. Um, uh, the homie Black Diamond who produced the beat and he also did Nikes on my feet so I was like literally in the booth and I had Nikes on I was like oh I got those Nikes on my feet as we speak shout out to Mac Miller and I did it because Diamond had produced it got but it. I've explained this in the interviews and all right, no, I know I know you have yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to put that out there too of course mind you that was like years and years long, ago long long time yeah, ago yeah. now um, okay ladies and gentlemen his name is Logic mm. there'll be an album this fall yes. is there anything else while you're having this first Hot 97 Real with Peter Rosenberg moment. Is there anything that you feel you want to address? Anything that needs to be said while you're um, having that first interview that yeah. we should get out there? I mean, besides, you know, the fact that the album's going to be insane and, like, that's going to be the turning point, I do want to take this moment to thank you because I've been watching you for years and, you know, you're from where I'm from and it's really, I, I just love your perspective of hip-hop. You, you have this, like, unbiased you know, uh, outlook on it. It's very open-minded. And I just want to tell you, you know, that it's really awesome to be I here today. I really appreciate that. And I, I apologize for being slow because by the time people hit me up and told me about you, you were already popping. And no, I was like, you know good, what? I got to check this guy out. Love, um, album coming soon. His yes. name is Logic. Uh, Logic 301 on Twitter? Logic 301 on Twitter. You already know. I mean, that's still my cell phone. You already know what time it is. Is your cell phone still 301, though? I don't yeah. think oh, it, no, is. It, it is. It is? It is, yes. I'm about to look right now. Oh, uh, come on. Remember, I'm going to check the info on your, on your contact. <laughs> All right, Logic, ladies and gentlemen. Real late. Throwbacks up next. It's Hot 97.